guys, this is Ro, and I'm here to read Negative Cat by Sophie Blackall, which was one of our Chickadee Award books this year. Negative Cat. And it says, dedicated for our own negative cat, Claudia, an olive and eggy who loved her. On day 427 of asking for a cat. Cat? 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 Meow. Milk? Cat? Please? Okay. My parents finally gave in. I can hear my own negative cat right now. They said, you have to feed it and keep your room tidy and take out the litter and write to your grandma and read for 20 minutes every day, and it better not have fleas. Oh, I'm not so great at reading. Words only make sense when I read them out loud slowly, and the kids at school make fun of me and laugh. But I agree to the rules before my parents change their mind. I'm getting a cat, I'm getting a cat, I'm getting a cat. There are a million cats in the rescue shelter and I want to take them all home, but mom says only one. And then I find him. His name on the cage is Pookie, but that is no name for a cat. This cat is Maximilian Augustus Xavier and we will call him Max. When we get home, I am excited to show Max his bed and his scratching post and his litter tray and his scent of sea frisky bits. He is not excited. The next day, I surprise Max with a toy mouse. He is not surprised. I tickle him with a feather but he's not ticklish. I tell him all my best jokes and he doesn't even smile. At school, my friends go on about how excellent their cats are. Camilla can wear her cat like a scarf. Jack's cat can fetch a stick. And Emilio's cat has its own Instagram page. My cat stares at the wall. He's kind of negative, your cat. On the weekend, Dad lets Max have the best parts of the paper. Uncle Dave knits him a sweater, and Mom lets him borrow her shoes. In return, Max leaves hairballs on the rug, his tail in the butter, and poop in the vestibule. He eats the flowers and deletes my emails to grandma. Everyone is mad at Max. He doesn't even purr. We should have gotten a dog. I'm calling the shelter. And then they're mad at me. Your room's a mess. He hasn't been reading. Have you even written your grandma? I still love you, Max. When the lady from the shelter comes, Max and I hide in my room. The grown-ups talk on and on. Blah, 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 commitment. Blah, 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 responsibility. Blah, 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 negative. I have an idea, and it's our only hope. I tidy my room in record time, and I reach for a book. I take a deep breath, and I begin to read slowly, the only way I know how. And Max stares, but he doesn't laugh. I turn the page, and Max inches closer, and closer, and closer. He tucks his head under my arm, and I stay perfectly still and read, and read. 
right to the very end of the book. <gasps> the lady from the shelter says Max and I should come to read to all the cats to cheer them up. And these are all the cats. There's Princess Charlie Bear, Lefty, Crackers, Licorice, Tan Handsome, Margaret, Regina, Custard, Lieutenant Gibson, Archie, Dudley, Pocket, and Margie. So we do. Now my whole class reads every Tuesday. We all read out loud, fast or slow, however we like. The cats are happy and the lady at the shelter is happy and the parents are happy. Sort of. Can we please get a cat? 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 Can I please get a cat? The end. And this is the story of the book. And it says, when my kids were little, we adopted a cat from the animal shelter. The sign on her cage said her name was Cinnamon, but we called her Claudia after a character from the mixed up files of Mrs. Basil E. Frankweiler. And because she had claws, over the years she grew into what my son described as a negative cat. She ate the flowers, she hugged the newspaper, and she stared at the wall. She would ask to be stroked and then bite your hand. She would demand to be fed and then throw up on the carpet and then complain that she was hungry. But we loved her. A few years ago, I wrote a negative cat story, but I didn't know how to end it. I was about to put it away in the doomed files of unfinished stories when I read about something extraordinary happening at the Animal Refuge League of Berks, Berks County, Pennsylvania. Children who wanted to practice their reading were encouraged to read to cats. Not only were they non-judgmental listeners, they became calmer and more sociable in the presence of readers. Children would read their books aloud, and before long, a cat would saddle up and lean against them and purr. Sometimes a deep bond was formed, and a cat found a new home. I would like to thank the Animal Rescue League of Berks County for their work supporting animal welfare and literacy, and the heart of the Catskills Humane Society for allowing me to hang out with and draw and read to their cats. The Animal Rescue League Book Buddies program has inspired similar programs across the country. You can contact your local shelter to see if they welcome readers or book donations. Our own Claudia was a negative cat for most of her life, but she became surprisingly sweet in her final days. If only we had read to her sooner. And I decided to share this book because I have my own negative cat from the shelter. You might have heard her howling a little bit earlier in the story and I'm going to show you her in just a minute. So here she is. This is Jules or Juliet Fatskins, her full name we got from the shelter and we just call her Juicy and I think she's kind of a negative cat because she likes to scream and howl all the time and interrupt lots of stories I read at home and it's funny that she didn't decide to uh, interrupt this story, maybe because she liked hearing about all of the kitties. So I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you have a great day.